So uh, personalization of health. So this is an issue that I think about all the time. And uh, at my company, we are constantly looking for ways to help personalize people's experience with their health by giving them information about how what they do and what they eat and how they exercise actually affects their health and giving them a way to personalize it. And, and we're going to talk a lot about that. But before I do, I want to sort of ask a question. You know, what do we do today to manage our health? How do we manage our health? So there's this great picture that uh, Norman Rockwell came up with back in the 1920s, which gives you this idea of what your health care, your visit to your doctor should be like. You, know, you walk in, and there's a white-haired gentleman or lady with a stethoscope around their neck, and they look down your throat. They listen to your chest. They tap on your knees. Maybe they take blood. And at the end of it, they tell you you're healthy, or they tell you you're not. And you know that would be great if that were even what we do today. You know, but instead, it's only about 20% of people in the United States that actually visit their general practitioner once a year. For many of us, it's you know, two and three years before we go. And when you go, it's not like you're actually learning about what's been going on with you for the last year. Instead, you're getting one data point. One data point that tells you about that day when you're out of your natural environment. You're probably annoyed because you've had to miss work. You've had to reschedule things. And you see no baseline for what you've had about your body going on for the last year, the last day, the last week, or even the last hour, you're getting data which is old, which is not personal. And so, you know, the idea is, why aren't we personalizing our health? You know, why aren't we demanding to personalize our health? And so, if you think about all the things that we personalize in our life, it becomes kind of a silly question, or a no-brainer. I mean, we personalize our cars. Not everybody to this extent. Uh, we personalize our social media. This is a nice banner that I made for myself that I took down once I realized how narcissistic it was. <laughs> we, uh, we personalize our wardrobe. You know, we all go out and buy bespoke suits and we buy custom made dresses. We find those, those shoes that you know, nobody else has and we personalize it. We personalize our smartphones and our computers and our tablets. But the whole point here is that we don't personalize our health. And why don't we? It's the one thing that actually drives how long our life's going to be and how our quality of life's going to be throughout our life. So it brings me to like, the big point. We really need feedback for anything that we do. Anything we personalize, anything we want to improve, anything we hope to actually make personal to ourselves, we need feedback on it. Because feedback is the only real motivator of change. It's the only way you know if you're getting better at something. It's the only way you know that something's bad. It's the only way you make improvements. You know, we give feedback all day. We give feedback on how we look when we look in the mirror. If we like it, we're more apt to wear that outfit. We give feedback at work. Whenever, you know, from our managers or our peers, we get to rate our performance and rate how we're doing at everything. And that's the way we improve and we get better. We give feedback on food we make. And the whole point is that you need feedback to actually drive something to be better. So if we're going to make this idea of personal health happen, we need to figure out what the feedback mechanism is and what's the feedback we're going to use to make it happen. So in order to get feedback on our health and to make it personal and to make it actually work, we need a couple things. So this feedback, it needs to be non-invasive, it needs to be painless, and it needs to not be very habit changing. In other words, it really needs to be easy. So you know, as humans, we're creatures of habit. And if I give you something new to do that annoys you or that you don't like, you know, most likely you're not going to do it. Or you'll try it once, and then you're going to stop after a couple weeks. If I make it painful, well, you're going to be afraid of it. So you're certainly not going to do it. And if I make it invasive, that's just a whole other story. So we need to make it easy. The second thing is we really need to provide actionable data to people. So data you can't act upon is completely useless. Taking a bunch of data and you know, seeing what it can do, be done with it later is, is just totally useless. When I give you information about your body, I need to give you information about what you can do to improve. So in other words, I need to make it impactful. Now, third, and probably most importantly in my mind, I need to be giving you this feedback often enough that you can show progress. You can see if you're improving. You can adapt it. You can make this data adaptive. So now if I have these three things, you know, easy, impactful, and adaptive feedback, I can truly start hoping to personalize my health. So let's ask the question, how do we get easy, impactful, and adaptive feedback data about ourselves? Well, for the last you know, five, 10 years, we've gone about building a bunch of different devices and naming them and creating a bunch of new constructs, things like 
mobile health and wearables and digital health. Uh, the quantified self movement came about where people want to start learning all about what's going on inside their body. We even went back in the archives and dug out an old word, the tricorder. So we've come up with all these things that might actually help us gain data about our body, but it's kind of a mishmash. It's kind of a, it's kind of a mix up mess, and we don't really know which one's going to be the right one and what's going to help us. And, or help us. And I kind of argue that the reason we have the term Internet of Things is the reason it's made up of things is we just we don't know what to call them yet. We just don't know what to call this thing that we're trying to build quite yet. And I think that all these words are going to go away. I think they're all placeholders for what we're all trying to converge on. We're trying to converge on a personalized device, something that gives us feedback that's easy, adaptive, and impactful that can actually help us. So now, if we look at today, we're trying to monitor personal health. Now, you know, we just saw a bunch of devices on stage, and all these devices are great. You know, we're, we're learning a lot about how we move. We're learning a lot about our heart rate. We're learning a lot about how we sweat. We're learning about, about all these different signals. But in some sense, if we want to get to this idea of a ubiquitous health monitor, something that can actually give us personal feedback about our health, much like the tricorder, well, we can wait 217 years and <laughs> If we do, it looks like we'll have invented it and we'll certainly have met the Klingons by that point. But if you ask yourself today, what are we doing? You know, the answer is, you know, not much. And we're sort of missing some pieces. And the piece that's missing to let us get here is sort of made up of a couple things. First, we have to understand the problem. If we want to get painless and non-invasive feedback, we need to be thinking about what's the problem that we're trying to solve here. Certainly taking blood is painful. Taking urine is invasive. So we need to think outside that box. We need to think about breath. We need to think about an optical scan of the body, some sort of overall thing that can tell us what's going on with the body. But even then, we need to understand that problem and the dimensionality of it. If I want to take data from my breath, I have to know about 300 different chemicals. Um, once we solve that problem, we have to figure out how to integrate it. And we need to integrate it into something that's easy to use and doesn't change your habit. So we need to be thinking about smartphones, computers, cars, your desk. And once we've integrated the solution, once we've solved the problem and understand it, we really need to be taking a bunch of data. You know, we take a lot of data already, but data on non-invasive things about the body just doesn't exist. I can't go out and look up what's going on in the population's breath or what's going on in the scan of the population's body the same way I can look up everyone in this room's fingerprint, or at least some of you, anyone who's been fingerprinted. Uh, <laughs> but the point is we need to solve all these things. And what they all point to is that we need novel core technologies to be able to do it. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean, there's a lot of technologies out there and there's a lot of devices which are based on decades old technology, which is great because we understand it. But, you know, what are we really doing about this? What are we doing to solve this problem? So we're using old technology, we're doing a lot of things. And I'm going to make a statement now that kind of slaps in the face a lot of things you hear in Silicon Valley. Uh, you hear people talking about low hanging fruit all the time. And I'm actually going to say we need to ignore the low-hanging fruit. We need to go beyond the low-hanging fruit, and we need to stop worrying about how can we repackage something old and make money off it quick. We need to build core technologies that allow us to non-invasively take data from the body. And in that way, we actually will solve the problem. So I'm just going to tease you now with a few things that we might be able to do if we were to solve this problem, if we were to actually get personalized health and get this feedback, which is easy, impactful, and adaptive. So what if I could help you lose weight by telling you when your body's burning fat in real time and tell you how that's related to what you just ate, tell you how that's related to how you worked out, but you with your own baseline for how you normally burn it. You know, what if I could tell you 45 minutes before you're about to have an asthma attack? Asthmatics in the room will say, I, I really, I, I'd love that, at least I hope you do. Uh, but basically tell you something's going to happen to you that's bad before it happens so you don't have to experience that, you don't have to end up in the hospital. What if I could tell you the minute your body showed signs of infectious disease? You know, we're sitting in a room of 100 people or so here. Someone's undoubtedly sick. <laughs> Someone's undoubtedly going to wake up in a couple days and say, where did I get sick from? <laughs> and of course, you want to know as soon as that happens. You want to know as soon as that happens. You don't want to have to go through a blood test, wait for the result. You want to know when that happens so you can take the right medicine. What if I could tell you how all of your organs are working? Look for problems with your lungs, problems with your kidneys, problems with your liver as soon as they happen. And actually know how your liver is working. Know what your baseline stuff is, not what the average person is. We need to remove this idea of the average person. What if I can give you early warning signs for cancer? There's lots of kinds of cancer that are very treatable if you catch them early, like breast cancer and lung cancer. But 
as it is as a society, we don't catch these things until much later, much when it's much harder, when your prognosis is much worse. And you know, what if I could monitor your blood glucose non-invasively? What if I could tell you how to do all of these things and actually give you personal data? And what if I could do it all through your breath? We talked about non-invasive measurements. I mean, this just happens to be the problem that we think about at my company all the time. But thinking about how to non-invasively impact yourself with an easy, impactful, and an adaptive feedback mechanism is the only way we're actually going to get to personal health. So while all this might sound like Star Trek, I think the future's here. And I think the time to do this is now. And I think the only way we can make the next step is to demand personalization of health. And what I mean by that is technologists build new novel technologies. Yeah, investors invest in novel technologies and novel ways of gaining this feedback. You know, everybody else demand it and start thinking about how you can track personal data now so that we can truly personalize health. And once we do, once we do, we'll be in a world where we can actually look at our own health and we can see where we've been, we can see where we're going, and we can learn all these great things I just mentioned in the last slide in real time. Thank you.